Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing LEGO Star Wars 75315 Imperial Light Cruiser. I actually picked this up yesterday, but I'm reviewing it today because I spent yesterday afternoon building it. And reviews for The Mandalorian Starfighter and Boba Fett Starship are going to be coming in the next couple of days. First up we have Grogu, or as he was previously known, The Child. This is actually the first set where he is actually called Grogu on the box instead of the child. And this Grogu figure is in fact a little bit different to the child figures. Not in printing or anything, I've just noticed that taking his head off is a little bit more difficult on this one than on the previous ones where it would just kind of slip on and off. No differences with the actual figure though. Just the snor same normal head mold and torso printing. Got the normal baby mold and green hands and all that. Here we have the Mandalorian or Din Djarin. He is still being called the Mandalorian on the boxes instead of Din Djarin. Anyway, he has his Beskar spear, which also came in Boba Fett's starship. And also his rifle for some reason because... It got destroyed in chapter 14 with the Razor Crest, so not sure why he has it in this set, because canonically he doesn't have it in this scene. Like, he didn't bring it, but it literally didn't exist at this point in the show. Anyway, he's got his awesome arm printing with the mud horn skull on the side, and on the other side there, nothing on the shoulder pad, but you've got his whistling birds on the, f the wrist part and on the other side for the wrist part we've got his flamethrower and underneath still a black head as usual and on the back behind his cape there is a really good back print as usual great figure he's been coming in this summer well not summer august wave a lot don't know why I called it Summer Wave, I guess it's just because other people have. I'm in Australia, so technically it's winter, but, you know, it's still kind of a Summer Wave. Anyway, moving on to the next figure. Here we have Cara Dune. She is exactly the same figure that came with, with the ATST Raider in 2019. Um, as far as I can tell, there aren't any printing differences or anything. Exactly the same figure. Just with that same leg printing and torso printing, she's still got the back print, uh, still got the same hair piece, and the same face print, the same angrier face print on the back of her head, same rifle with a gunmetal grey lightsaber hilt on it, whoops, but yeah, there you go, Cara Dune, you get another one of those if you don't have the ATST Raider. Now, those three figures that I just took a look at, these have all come in previous sets, unless you count Mando as exclusive, because he has, he's never come in a set with those two weapons before, just, he's had both of these weapons, just not both of them at the same time in one set. But other than that, all, all non-exclusive figures. But the other three, they are exclusive, and we'll take a look at them now. First up of the three new ones is Fennec Shand. Uh, she's got a really nice torso print there. Looks a lot like how it does in the show. Same with the back print. I've noticed it is very, very detailed. I'll give you a better look at that. You can see all the little details in there. They did a really good job with this print. Anyway, she's got leg print with her karma with those orange triangles printed on. Would have been nice to get some side leg printing or even an actual karma that looked like her in Universe 1. She also has, as a surprise, arm printing. No one expected this, but um, it's a nice touch. She's got stripes and that little orange thing on this side and on the other side, just stripes. Uh, she has a new helmet mold, which I thought would be dual molded, but as you can see in there, it is actually just printed all of it is orange, it's just got black printed on there. I'll take that off to give you a better look at it. So, yeah, it's pointed on the front. Completely orange on the inside. Got a stripe down the middle. Some details on the back. It's a pretty cool mold. And she also has a face print. 
but sadly no hairpiece to go on while the helmet's off, so it's kind of confusing why we got a double-sided face print since there's no hairpiece, but this d this does the job, it's a nice detail. She's got a kind of neutral expression on one side and more of a smirk on the other side. Um, with the helmet on, you can see her eyes through it, and with this neutral exp expression, it's just normal. But if you turn it around and have the angrier expression, well, angry eyebrows, but a smiling face, she does, you can see a slight change in her eyebrows, which kind of makes her look angrier, but you can't really see it from any angle other than this. So, yeah, not a very useful detail, but it's it's a detail nonetheless. As this light cruiser is Moff Gideon's, it of course had to come with Moff Gideon. He unexpectedly doesn't have a leg print, and he has a nice torso print, very detailed, very accurate. And he has a very cool cape. Under that, we've got another ba his back print, which is also pretty accurate, but doesn't really matter because it's covered by the cape. And speaking of the cape, it's double-sided, black on the outside, red on the inside, so very cool. And as for the material, um, it's actually not one I've seen before. It's different to Mando's, which is the kind of stiffer material. So Lego used to have all stiff capes, but their newer stiffer capes aren't as stiff, but are still the stiffer kind. Um, the, the soft capes used to be very, very soft, but this one is kind of in the middle. It might be something to do with it being too colored, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, he does have his dark saber, which is unfortunately just a normal lightsaber hilt with a black lightsaber blade. Definitely could have done with a new mold for that, but unfortunately we didn't get that. He has a hairpiece, which is pretty accurate. For his face, I keep thinking his moustache is his mouth, but it's not. It's his moustache, and his mouth is not a chin, chin wrinkle, it's his mouth. And it's a pretty accurate facial expression there. And on the other side, He's got an angrier facial expression, which is also pretty accurate. And now for the last figure. This was probably the most anticipated figure of the set, the Dark Trooper. He's a very cool figure. He's got a new helmet mold and uses this also new chest piece, which was also used on Wrecker in the Bad Batch Attack Shuttle, and will be used for Paz Vizsla in the Armour's Mandalorian Forge, which releases in September. Anyway, he has a pretty accurate torso print. I will take off this just to give you a better look at it. It's got a pretty similar print on this than on the torso, so kind of just covers that up, but it's the same thing. Um, he's got an accurate leg print as well. On the back, he's got a back print, but top half of that is covered by this, so didn't really need that detail, but it's nice to have it anyway. Um, he has actually a pearl grey blaster, oh actually gunmetal grey, it's darker than the pearl grey ones, which I didn't expect, but it, I double checked and it's actually pretty accurate, So because it doesn't actually have a black blaster. Anyway, I'll put this back on, um, here is the head, which looks kind of strange, but when you put the new mould on, which is by the way very very cool, it does actually have holes where the eyes are. This is a droid, by the way, so they're not really eyes, so... Yeah, but as you can see, there are holes there. So when it goes on, it gets that red under it from the head. So it looks really cool when it's on. And on the back, you can see the bottom half of the head print on there, which does look pretty cool, I guess. I'll show you that back head print. It's just that little weird thing off center for some reason, not sure why. I might have to look up the Dark Trooper again to get a better look at it. But yeah, this mold is very detailed and very cool. So yeah, we've got to get this figure in a battle pack sometime in 2022. Hopefully the January wave, because hopefully they bring back battle packs as soon as possible and we don't have to wait till 2023 or something like that. 
Now let's look at the light cruiser. This was the biggest set of the August wave. I'll give you a closer look at it. We've got some nice greebling on the sides. It's one stud thick here, but then becomes two studs thick, which I think gives it a nice look of it thinning out up to the front, even though it doesn't really. It's the same thickness. We've got this little bit here, which you can move, but you're not supposed to. It's just to look good there. We've got two cannons, two on each side actually, so there are two on the other side too. Um, we've got these rotating turrets, which can go 360 degrees. And yep, that was just a spring-loaded shoe that fired. You can fire the other one too. Pretty cool. Um, we've got these bits on the side. Here's the bridge. Um, as you can see, I kind of messed up the stickers, but it wasn't really my fault. So as you can see, this line on here goes down like that, but it goes up on this one. Uh, that's because on the instruction, that's what it said to do, but on the box, um, they made it look better by changing the stickers. Don't know why it was in looking bad in the instructions. In the side, we do have these two TIE Fighters, which I'll show you later. Got this nice slope down from the bridge. These bits here. We've got these nice big engines. These outside casings that are on these two outside ones are not in here, so... I was wondering that before I got this set, but now that I have it in person, I can see that this is in fact pretty empty. I'll take off this panel to give you a look at that. It's just all bricks and Technic in there. Uh, this is a little bit squishy, which is kind of weird. It'd be more, it'd be nicer if it was just there. We've got some greebling to fill in these bits here, greebling on the top, greebling all over, and it looks fantastic. Um. There is interior, but first I'll just bring over my Star Destroyers to give you a size comparison for this. Here we go, here's the Imperial Light Cruiser next to the Imperial Star Destroyer and the First Order Star Destroyer. So, as you can see, they are not actually the same length. The Light Cruiser is a decent amount longer, but um, they are around the same size still because all this mass from the extra stuff on the back would go in to fill out this bit to make them around the same size. These were both $250 sets, but this was $270, Australian dollars, I should add. Um, uh, you may notice that this one has a carrying handle, which you can pick it up by. The first order one also does. These both just come out of the bridge, built with Technic stuff, but the light cruiser has something different. So the light cruiser actually has the handle built inside the thing, so it all comes up to the bridge, which means you can pick up the entire thing by just grabbing the bridge, something like that. It's not as comfortable. Oops, I stopped recording halfway through that. Anyway, as I was saying, it's not as comfortable as you might hope, but you can still pick it up. It does lean forward a little bit when you're holding it, but you can just physically tilt it up to solve that. That wasn't a problem on those other two Star Destroyers I just showed you. But yeah, you can just swoosh it around, or you can just use that to pick it up and transport it, whatever you want to do with that. I should just add, I know this is not a Star Destroyer, it's a light cruiser, it's about the ten in universe, it's about a tenth the size of an Imperial Star Destroyer, and maybe a twentieth the size of a First Order Star Destroyer, so... But it's, it's still good that they made the sets around the same size so that you can actually get some interior in here, even though it does have less interior than the other Star Destroyers. To access the interior, you'll just want to grab that and open it up. Very simple. I'll show you what it looks like. Fully opened up. Doesn't look great on this underside, but does that really matter? No. So, if we look inside here, whoops, if we look inside here, you'll see there are a few control panels. There's two here, those are different stickers. There's one there. Excuse background noise. Those two there, this one and this one, are the same size. And in the middle, we have the iconic hologram table, which you can take off. For some reason, they put a coffee cup on it. Not sure why. I'd like to put that here because it's one of the few spaces where it fits and doesn't hold this up when you close it. So because it doesn't fit there and or there or on the other ones without. Opening it up. Anyway, it's got four stickers on the top and one on each side for the control panels. Those are the same stickers. Um, 
there was actually a hologram shown on this in the show of Mando, which sadly is not included in the set, but there is a very similar one included in the Armourer's Mandalorian Forge, which was the hologram of the full armor curus that the armor was making for Mando, so very similar to that, you can just put that there. Now you may notice there are these ugly little bits here which hold on these underside panels, but I like to think of them as controls for the outside gun, so you can get a figure and position in there, kind of controlling them with these two bits as kind of beep, shoot, beep, shoot, I don't know, whatever you want to do with it. It also has these two crates, so the one on, actually I'll go to the one on the other side first. This one has inside some binoculars, electro binoculars, binoculars, macro binoculars, whatever you want to call them. You can just give that to a figure. And that just goes in there. On the other side, there is a thermal detonator, but since it was a small piece, it came with a spare. So I just put both of them in there because who doesn't want more than one thermal detonator? I, I know I want more than one thermal detonator. So there you go, those are pretty cool. I'll just put those back in there. There is also a clip here, which in the instructions is used to store this fifth spring-loaded shooter as a spare one for if you lose one. So it's not too much of a big deal if you lose one unless you really like having the full sets. Um, I'll grab these TIE fighters out of the side. They just connect with an anti-stud on the back there to that stud in there, you may be able to see that. Um, it's a nice little storage area for them. And you see there is the launch tube in the front, I'm just trying to get a good camera angle on it. Um, there is this bit, you can put the TIE fighter in and then see this button here, give that a push and out it comes and it fell onto the floor and broke. I'll put the other one in to give you another look at it. Um, you can give it a real push and it gets much more distance. So as I said, if you just give it a little tap, it won't go very far. But, I'll just push that back. If you give it a flick or just a harder tap, it fell down there. So. You can see that that goes very far if you give it enough force. I'll show you me shooting that in slow motion just so you can see how it goes. Something that you may have noticed when I was shooting them was that they kind of flip around a bit, but if you put two of them in there, which isn't so accurate at all, it may work better. So I'll show you that in slow motion as well, see if I was right and my tests earlier were correct. As you can see, that didn't work as well as I hoped, but trust me, in my earlier tests, when I put two TIE Fighters here, they stayed straight, with no flipping all the way to around here before they started bouncing around and stuff. But with a normal TIE Fighter, it kind of just flips around and bounces and stuff. But yeah, um, since the button's on the inside, you can't actually shoot them from the inside. It would have been really nice, you could have just picked it up, grab a TIE fighter from there, stuff it in the front, and shoot it out as you're swooshing it along. That would have been really fun, I reckon. But sadly, because of the way it's constructed, they couldn't fit that in, obviously. So, it's not that great, the amount of interior space, especially since if you put them in certain spots where these thicker bits of the roof are, they can't stand up properly, and if you put them anywhere in front of maybe here, it just doesn't work. They get squashed down, or this doesn't close properly when they're in there, so that's kind of annoying, but I guess if you've got another Star Destroyer, then you've got more interior space to put them in, but it would have been nice if they could have fit something in here or here, or, you know, anywhere in the back. Maybe some extra storage, at least, in these bits, maybe. But, yeah, that just about does it for my review. There are some sets which you buy for the build, and some which you buy for the figures. This is definitely one of the ones where you buy it for both. Because this set has phenomenal figures, and really good build overall, minus the lack of interior. 
But other than that, it's a really good set. I would definitely recommend picking this up if you're a fan of The Mandalorian Season 2, Chapter 16. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please like the video. If you like the content I make, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.